Alrighty, so welcome back. I'm back. I took the family down to Florida. We went to go to sick week and just had kind of a little family vacation. Snuck away to go do that. So that was pretty cool to see, but back to working on this thing and I'm actually going to do like a little product review because I think this thing is pretty cool. So this thing is a uh, depth tech. I don't know if that's how, if I'm saying that right. I got this thing on Amazon. This is $64 and I did pull it out and I used it yesterday and it's probably the best one I've used yet best budget one I've used and uh, wanted to go over it. I'm going to be using this to check all the, the pistons because so when this car came in I pulled the learn table off the ECU and it was correcting 50% and it was maxed out at 50% correction at like 10 pounds of boost. So I just want to double check the pistons, make sure that they're okay visibly. I did do a compression test on the motor and all the compression came back good, but I just want to visually check the pistons, make sure that there's no cracks or anything wrong with anything. Just as kind of a sanity check before we button everything up. So here's this little guy. It comes in this case. It does have a little charging cable, so this is rechargeable. This one has, I believe it's a 16-foot cable. <laughs> I was real impressed with this thing when I first started playing with it yesterday. So it's got a little button, power button on the side. Comes on. It's got a color screen. So there you can see me and the camera. It's kind of a little camera reception going on. It does have adjustable brightness on the camera. And then if I hold this top button here, it actually switches to a side view. So now the side view camera is actually on. So there it's facing me, even though I got the camera pointed up, I'll hit and hold the button again, which is a little bit easier to see the screen, but now it actually does a dual view camera on the screen. So it's color, also takes picture and video. So I'll hold that button again to get it back to the single screen. And then now what I can do here is I can hit this camera button and then it says photo taken. Photo success. It's a little blurry, but that little red blurb in the middle, photo success. And then if I want to take a video, I can hold that. Here you can see it's actually recording video. So turn that off. There's a little USB input and SD card at the bottom. The card that it came with is a 32 gigabyte card. It's pretty good. It also has a little 180 degree option on it to flip the screen. 180. If I hold this one on the bottom here, it'll let me into the pictures to actually see the pictures. So there's all the pictures that I took. And if I want to go in and delete the pictures, it's actually on the delete function there. Hit OK, delete file. So we'll do that again, menu, delete, and go over, delete file, successful. And then what I'll, then what I'll do here is just hit delete all. So now we got no files, we're blank again. And then I can just hold the button on the side and it'll shut off. So yeah, for 64 bucks, I think this thing is a really good deal. Now let's go ahead and check a couple pistons and see how this works out. Okay, so I do have it in uh, cylinder number two. What I think I might actually do is start recording and then I'll see if I can screen capture this and basically put it on the screen. I'm going to turn over the engine by hand and then bring the piston down. There you can see the piston moving. Adjust that so I can actually see the whole piston. So this is on the side view camera. So what I'll do is change the camera view. I'm going to stop the recording. I guess I can't change the camera view while I'm recording. So now I got the camera view changed. Let's make sure I get the piston all the way at the bottom. We're pretty close, I can see all of it. So I'll start recording again. Then I can kind of move this around the piston. So there you can see the spark plug hole. <clears throat> the problem that I'm having now is that this coil, I mean, it is really stiff. So you probably want it to be stiff at some points, but it's a little difficult right now to try to try to twist it. I did try the side angle camera a little bit. It didn't didn't seem to show me much more. Kind of shows more of the cylinder wall. 
to we can rotate this a little bit try to see as much of the piston as possible so yeah I can see quite a bit of the piston there that one does actually look like it has a little nick or something on it a little spot on the top but no big chunks broken out of it which is kind of what I'm gonna go look for and then what I can do with that that's kind of cool is I can actually take a picture of inside of each cylinder and then show that to the customer or just keep it for my own record, right? So pretty cool little unit. And then what I did do here was I just put a little bend, like a 90 degree bend in it so I could actually tw twist and rotate. Because this is so stiff it's kind of hard to rotate like this. I just put a little 90 to bend in it so I could actually twist and rotate the camera. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of the cylinders. I'll come back. Right, so done checking everything, put it back in the case. I'll also show you on the back side here, there's a little cup that has some hooks on it. So this hook would go on like the end of the camera, and then you could actually hook stuff. This one goes on the end and it's actually a magnet. So that'd be kind of cool for going in stuff and grabbing something out that you dropped. But I think the really impressive part is the $64 that it was on Amazon to buy it. it does come with a case which is pretty cool I've bought a couple of the cheaper bore scopes in like the $30 range and they have a similar cord type like that But the ones I used before were actually like a USB stick that would plug into a bottom of a phone And then you'd use the app and that was always kind of annoying to deal with I think one broke and I lost the other one So I ended up getting this guy. I like this one a lot better I like the screen big screen the color screen and the fact that it actually records uh, picture and video and saves it onto a separate USB card is pretty cool. So that's that engine looks pretty good There was one piston that I was a little bit concerned about But I think it was actually just like some fluid on top of the piston. It looked like it was actually a Section that was kind of potentially damaged all of the pistons do look like they hit the valves at one point So I don't think it's a current issue. It's probably a past issue where something happened and then it nicked the valves or the valves nicked the pistons I don't think it's a current issue because the compression was good. If the valves were actually hit and bent, the, I don't think the compression would be normal. So I feel like we're good here. The one I think was just fluid or oil sitting on top of the piston. So I'm gonna call it good and we'll move on. I think the next big thing I'm gonna be working on this car is actually wiring. The fuel system's done now. So now we're getting into wiring and then some of the other little stuff. I do got a couple brake lines to do. So really not that far off. All right, so I actually waited till the next day to get this video up. So this is the picture I was Talking about here with the piston that I said kind of looked a little bit funny like it looked like it might be damaged Or it looks like there could be a puddle on it This is probably the worst picture that actually makes it look like it's missing part of the piston But if you look at this picture here on like the lower right hand side It just like kind of looks like it's wet or like it has oil on it So it doesn't really look like it's missing a section of it or it's melted off That is also the bottom side of the piston so a dot would be forward, this is on the passenger side, so that part of the piston will be down. So if there was any oil in the cylinder, it would gravitate towards that side of the piston. And then here's just another picture there where it actually kind of just looks like there's some fluid on. And if you look on the far right side of the picture where the black section is, there's actually, it looks like some moisture like from some oil where you can see a wet spot and a dry spot. So I'm kind of thinking that this is maybe just a, like a glob of oil or something sitting on there. But either way, I wanted to wait a day to get this video up. I did talk to the owner about this, I showed him the pictures, and we agreed that either way what we're going to do is we're just going to send it the way it is. So he wants to build an aluminum block piston and rod motor on the side while this one's in the car. So either way, we're just going to take this one, run it for a while, he's going to work on that other motor on the side. And especially because all the other pistons do have those little nick marks on them, instead of pulling this one apart, changing pistons and rods and gaskets and all that other stuff. He's just going to put that energy into the new motor and then run this one as is. So that's the plan. That's what we're going to do. It's a pretty cool to be able to use a borescope and actually go inside there and see if there's any issues. See what you got. Good tool for possibly the junkyard if you're going through and trying to find a junkyard motor and you just want to turn it over and be able to actually look inside of it. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Hug your kids and don't forget to recycle your junk mail.